So a while back when I started this channel, I decided not to do any contest response. It's just something that um, I found kind of hard to keep up with. And I was able to do contest response for some people and for other people I didn't. It was just a whole timing thing, scheduling thing. And I kind of felt bad about that. Plus, I wanted my YouTube channel to be specifically about a certain topic. So I decided back back a while that uh, I was not going to do any contest response. However, there are on occasion that a contest response I find intriguing and I just can't resist. Thus, today I'm going to give you my contest response for uh, baseball collector Mike Moynihan in sharing the pet peeves that we want to share about the hobby. I'm going to split it up in two categories, and that is my pet peeves as hobby content creators and my pet peeves within the hobby overall. You ready? Then let's do this. Hello and welcome, Rookie Card Collectors. Victor, the Rookie Card Specialist. Here, it's all about the Rookie Card. We look at the past and present day status of the Rookie Card, all in an effort to better understand this hobby icon. While I started to this uh, video by really trying to understand what exactly was a pet peeve. Now, the difference between a pet peeve and a peeve is... Nothing, really, to be honest with you. I was at first thinking, what is a pet peeve, okay? My dog, Sandy, which I'll leave a picture of her here, it kind of bothers me when I I forget to let her out and she ends up peeing in the house or something, and I got to pick all that up, and that's just really, really frustrating. That's a pet peeve. And I also... There's there's these moments that she has when she she wants something or she wants to be let out or she wants attention, but she'll start this like moaning <laughs> just absolutely drives me crazy because I could be in the middle of something and she'll be like all up in my face moaning with uh, whining, I guess is a better way to put it. That's a pet peeve. <laughs> Overall, the, the, the dictionary, so I went to the dictionary, and this really helped me out here. The definition of a pet peeve is something that gives you continual annoyance. And then the light bulb went off. Okay, I got it now, because there's a lot of pet peeves. <laughs> but which are the ones that give you continual annoyance? So I looked up the word peeve uh, by itself, and it was basically the same definition. So... Here we go. I'm going to start with the pet peeves or the peeves that I have with hobby content creation. You ready? The first one. Collecting collectors versus investors. I think I've about had my fill of this type of hobby content that really is uh one is against the other. Now, I totally get it because I have been, e even myself within the last few years, have found myself being annoyed by certain hobby content that deals specifically with investing. But at the same time, I kind of see the, the point of us all needing to kind of coexist in the hobby because uh, truth be told, I think all collectors operate and function as a flipper or an investor at some point and vice versa. At least most of us do. Now, there are some of you with really deep pockets who have wonderful careers and you don't have to do that kind of stuff. You can just straight up uh, collect. I consider myself a collector, but in order for me to be a long-term sustainable collector and accomplish some of the goals that I have, I have to sell off some of the stuff that I don't that doesn't really fit into my collection. So in order for me to accomplish my goals, not only do I got to have like a monthly budget that comes from my paycheck, but I also have to um, sell a few cards to help me meet my goals. And so it, it, does that make me a flipper or an investor? I, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, but uh, I know that we all need to coexist. Uh, I, I do know that I've had my fill of listening to it 
and we just need to move on from this topic. It's just something that is really starting to continually annoy me. Number two, and and I'm I'm going to apologize in advance because I, I'm uh, I, I might just keep it real here for a few things. Uh, it's not meant to offend anybody, but just more allowing us right to vent, to really get some things off our chest that have been on our chest for quite some time. That's how come I I really was drawn to this um, to this contest response. Uh, but number two, citing sources. I've talked about this before in a previous video, but it's worth repeating here. As a content creator, you know, I started off as a blogger and a writer. I actually love writing. I love writing more than I do making videos, but I, I really don't write that much anymore. But citing your sources is something that's very important, if not very legal, in the writing category, in the, in the realm of writing. Uh, writing content. Now, on the YouTube side, not so much. But what I have noticed is, <clears throat> and I see this especially with bigger channels, bigger channels will be inspired by an idea of a smaller channel. And there's no, there's no recognition, they don't cite their sources. And and I know uh, some, some content creators do i know um because i'm carlos he's very good at if if he watched a video that inspired him to create a video of his own or a response of his own he's very good at citing the source of where he got that information and will leave the link down in the description that's to me is just professional courtesy but there are some that will just literally take your content and spin it their way and even take the literal things that you have said I've, I've had a podcaster even literally verbatim steal my information and, and, and use it as his own with, without citing sources. And, and that's the kind of stuff that really just continually annoys me. Number three is scripted versus unscripted content. Now, I, I just think that on this one, this, this bothers me because I, I think – there is this badge of honor that some content creators wear that they don't script their content, that it's just, you know, they just free for all. They just go for it. And it works sometimes, but that doesn't work all the time. And, you know, I'm one where I am. I'm heavily scripted, heavily scripted in the content that I create. I want my stuff to be impactful. I want my stuff to be evergreen, meaning long lasting. And, and I don't want to waste your time with a bunch of ums, ahs, and, and, um, and mumbling. So I come prepared. I come scripted. There have been times where I have scripted an entire video and I memorize what I'm trying to say. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I will memorize it and present it in a very, what they call, polished way. I know uh, Omar over at Retro Hoops called it polished. But yeah, it, it's polished because I put the work into it. It's it's polished because it's scripted. It's 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 polished because I put in the work to memorize what I've what I want to say. I put in the work in my editing. I put a lot of work into creating something and presenting something informative. And I shouldn't be, I don't know, to me that's like looked down upon uh, in some circles and there's like this badge of honor this trophy if you do content creation unscripted well i i think some content creators need the script they they do need some type of direction in, in what they're saying uh because it, we can get long-winded and we, we take forever to make a point if we even have a point at all and that's kind of the you know the the that's how, kind of how I feel about it. It's nothing. It's not a big deal. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just making an observation and something that when I see it, it kind of, it kind of continues continuously annoys me. <laughs> Number four, here's another badge of honor that some content creators wear. And that is uh, sponsorship. Uh, apparently it is a hobby crime. If a content creator um, accepts a sponsorship from somebody else, from a, from an industry leader or a company or of that sort. Uh, it, they're, they're like looked down upon. I don't have any sponsors, but I've seen how people who are sponsored, I see how they're treated. Uh, 
and I see and I read the comments that are made about them, like it is a crime to be a content creator who's sponsored. It, it's something that to me uh, is that's jacked up. That that shouldn't be that way. I mean, um, some hobby content creators put in the work. They put in the hours. They they make content every single day, or or they make uh, uh, they have created a, a, a big influence, uh, a big following in a very short period of time. They have content that really resonates with industry leaders. What's wrong with them um, being sponsored? What's wrong? If I use, I'm a, I'm a big time advocate of vintage card prices that uh, uh, web data website. That's the one that I use. If VCP reaches out and wants to sponsor my show, absolutely. If it's a product that I use and that I believe in, what is wrong with being paid for the amount of work that you put in? You know, and I just, um, it, it, it baffles me sometimes. I, I just, I don't get it. And for what we are making, I mean, what it's, it's peanuts. And, but yet you're, you're, you're kind of looked down upon and frowned upon if you do decide to accept peanuts from, from another sponsor. So that's going to be it for my hobby content pet peeves. Now I'm going to move on to my hobby pet peeves because it's kind of overall. And, um, the first one I'm, I'm going to give it, it's it's a it's a softball because you guys already know this. I've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks, and that is eBay listings. That is just something that continuously annoys me when there is just a, a very blatant disregard for proper identification of a rookie card on eBay listings. Everything on flipping eBay is considered a rookie card in 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 the in the auction listings. Uh, so I won't spend any much more time on that. Number two hobby pet peeve of mine is Panini Baseball. Now, this product bothers me in, in the aspect of the legalities of Panini Baseball. And, and, and I, I, I have a pet peeve against uh, the Players Association, who in 2005 said, uh, this is the way you're going to be. And then in 2011, they signed Panini they uh, gave Panini the license, but they didn't address the rookie card issue. They, there's no mention of the rookie card deal or, or how it changed or how uh, they made no mention of it. And, and that to me is just really uh, unprofessional, number one. But number two, the, the product to me is just um, uh, some of it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I, I understand the, the draw. Some of it is absolutely some just some gorgeous cards to own and to collect and there's nothing wrong with that i have some myself but what i'm saying is when it comes to rookie card identification when it comes to the legalities of the rookie card which is kind of like my area of study i really get into that kind of thing panini baseball to me is um falls short when it comes to that and it continuously just irks me i wish that they would uh either give them the license and let them make official fully licensed cards or just go away, please. Number three, my third pet peeve is people who have an issue with submitting low value cards. And this is uh, something that is, uh, you know, everybody has their opinion and everybody's entitled to their opinion but, uh, you know, if, if, if you submit a card now under $5 or I, it's even under $20 now, if you submit a card under $20, it's like, why are you submitting that? That's garbage. All you're going to do is mess up the, the flow of PSA again. And don't be, you know, and look, man, don't be telling me what to submit and what not to submit. I'm going to submit whatever the heck I want. Right. And, and, and what you don't understand is, my purpose and your purpose might be different. Yeah, I'm, I may submit a, you know, a 50 cent card or a $2 card of, of somebody. Why? Because of a set registry that I'm building. You know, um, for example, the set registry, uh, the last tops card for every Hall of Famer. There's David Ortiz, his last tops card from his playing days. 
I got a stack of cards that I'm going through that I'm going to be submitting because I'm building up that set registry. And yeah, the card might be two bucks, but I need it for the set registry. And, and, and that's the set registry goes back to the very origins of PSA entirely. It's, it's what many have felt like is what has built PSA up to be the, 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 the dominant force that it is today. And, and so don't tell me that I can't, you know, submit cards under $20 or don't put a threshold on my submission values. That's up to me. <laughs> okay. The last one I'm going to share with you and uh, hold on a second. Let me share with you. Here's a couple of another, another, another set registry. I started guys. I'm sorry. Before I give you my last one, I'll show you a couple cards that I picked up recently. I did want to show you some cards, right? Uh, but, I started the Michael Jordan Master Set Baseball Registry, 82 cards, and this is his 1990 uh, Sports Collectors Digest Magazine baseball card. It's a pretty sweet card, actually, when you sit back and look at it. Um, camera's not doing it any justice. And here's the 1994 Upper Deck Fun Packs. There's 82 cards in the set registry. I had maybe a dozen or so, and I went ahead. You know, uh, PSA will, like, recommend to you uh, certain registries that you can start. And I've been wanting to do this one for quite some time. And uh, I went ahead and started it and started picking up a few cards. So, anyways, those are my pickups this week. Lastly, the last thing I'm going to give you that, that's a really big pet peeve of mine, besides my camera not wanting to focus... Come on, camera. Sheesh. Okay. The fourth one is these things. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's this, this little plastic membrane here that protects the sticky that just does not want to go away. And you go to put it in the garbage can and the thing just fights you and you're, look at this thing. My goodness, look at I don't get it. <laughs> What's the science behind this thing? Can somebody fix that for crying out loud? That's my last uh, pet peeve. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Hey, congratulations to Mike Moynihan and all of his accomplishments. Well earned. I've been following Mike for quite some time, and I, I was following him. <laughs> Mike has had a rocky road, but uh, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been, in the trenches with him through it all and uh, makes great content. He's been making great content for a long time. He's definitely become um, an influencer within the, within the community. And um, this was a, just an absolutely great idea to, to do this response. And everybody has their own little uh, twist and, and, and thing with it, but it was uh, not only uh, healthy, but it was a lot of fun. And, and I think that's a big part of it. That's why I decided to, to jump on in here and, and, and make a video with that said, guys, Hey, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next one. What? What in the world, man? Are you kidding me?